right to protest. Uh, and Matt here has been representing a number of them as their lawyer. So let's, let's give him a, a warm welcome today. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Um, as of February 2011, there's approximately 24 people being held in indefinite detention as a result of these negative security assessments by ASIO. The number has grown rapidly. Now it's believed that there is around 50 to 60 people in this situation. However, it's difficult to be precise. Many people targeted, have no knowledge until they are called in for community detention or from their community detention in order to have the cases reviewed. Most of these who are being held are Croatian. Importantly, these people have been deemed to be refugees as defined under the 1977 Oxford Protocol for Declaration of Refugees. We know about the, 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 the tragic situation that Mangini is in at the moment, the mother of two, currently pregnant, married to Australian citizen, called in for a case to view one day early. She picked up her kids from school, attended the offices as she was asked to do so. She's taken away by Circo guards, currently at the No right to review, no reasons. This is a nightmare scenario and will be considered completely unacceptable by any person. The health effects on refugees um, cannot be understated. A report has recently been prepared by a prominent Australian psychiatrist, Sharesh Sarandrum, regarding the effects of these conditions upon refugees. Sarandrum has found that a unique psychological disorder has developed, particularly in the Australian refugee community. The study concluded that this disorder is directly linked to the fact that refugees are held on a definite basis with no knowledge as to why and no right to respond. Already there are a number of suicides and there have been many attempted suicides by victims of Australia's refugee policy of detention. The way these people have been treated is not just foreign to the normal standards of morality and justice in a civilised society, it is also offensive to many central principles of our justice system. Those who seek to challenge their security assessments constantly run into the ACO stonewall where relevant information is withheld on the basis of ASIO's public interest community. The lack of appeal rights, the refusal to provide reasons for detention or to allow detainees to respond is clearly at odds with the principle of natural justice, a principle that applies to all those caught in our criminal justice system and a principle that is supposedly enshrined in the statutes which govern the processes of administrative law in this country. Concerns have been raised by government backbenchers regarding the possibility that ACO may be sharing information with the Australian government in the preparation of these assessments. Of course this has been denied, but without access to the documents, how can there be any certainty as to the credibility of these assurances? Meanwhile, we see an exponential rise in the budget for ASIO. This is now a mid-sized government department with almost zero accountability. History consistently shows that bad outcomes result from institutions operating with unchecked power. Executive officers often make mistakes. This is why judicial review, with total disclosure as to the materials upon which decisions are made, is essential to ensure natural justice. An alternative method for dealing with security risk suspects exists. We often hear from the supporters of this system that their hands are tied. These cases are simply too risky, too risky to disclose the information, and they simply can't be returned. But it is clear that while refugees continue to rot in detention, the problem has been placed in the too hard basket. There is another way. Australia has extraterritorial criminal jurisdiction. This is a power conferred under the Constitution. As with any other person suspected of involvement in a crime, detainees should be allowed to have their day in court. We say to ACO and to the federal government, if you believe that these people have been involved in any criminal activity, you're entitled to charge them. And we, the voters, are entitled to no threat, if any, that they pose. Thank you. Thanks very much for that speech. Um,